my porta cath removed. I'm going to quickly let you know about how it was the planning before, uh, what happened in the surgery as far as I know, and a little bit after. So the day before I got my porta cath removed, what happened is I received a call. And they said, hey, we would like you to come in an hour early tomorrow. We can go over some information. Also wanted you to, what was it, stop eating at like midnight or 6 a.m. And also one thing I asked was, when is the last time I can drink water? Because I've made the mistake before of stopping my water when I clearly could have been drinking water the entire time up until a couple hours. It's brutal. So they said, um, up until about two hours before the surgery, you can drink some water. So what I always like to do is take care of myself, my future self. So whenever I'm having surgery or anything where I know I'm going to be kind of laid out, I always clean the house and I always get groceries and kind of plan ahead what we can do and how to occupy my son because he totally matters and it's hard for him to comprehend what's actually going on. So we did get some babysitters lined up and he got attention and love and caring. And that was so important for my healing because I need my baby okay. So we got there um, earlier, we got there at 11.30, um, checked in, it took a little while. I think they were overwhelmed and there was like one last nurse for the day. So it was kind of a crazy hectic thing there. Um, we finally go to the back room, they put you in a bed and they ask you, you know, have you had any falls in the last year or whatever? I don't know. They ask you all these questions. You're like, I don't know, blah, 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 blah. So you go through those. Then they talk about um, medications, all your information. I request every single time now, please give me that anti-vomit stuff because I get sick every stinking time. So I did request it multiple times to make sure I was going to get that in my IV when they put me in twilight, not asleep. I feel like I'm asleep, but twilight apparently or you're totally awake. So here's where it got kind of interesting. The surgeon or main guy, whatever, came around and he was talking to everyone, kind of going over it. And he came over to me and he said, hey, I looked at your case. We were all talking about this this morning. You know, they have like their time that they all get together in the morning before they do the surgeries. And he said, why are you getting a port removed when you still need it? Uh, yeah, why? Why am I? Number one, I desperately need a port -a cath in the sense of I have phlebotomies that I have to get done. My veins are horrendous. If you saw why I needed the phlebotomies or the port -a cath for the phlebotomies, you would totally understand. I have like one good vein. I actually had um, ultrasounds done when I had the clots. They were looking for other things with my arms and legs. So what I did while she was there scanning, I'm like, look for some good veins and let me know so I can give them a heads up. <laughs> so literally we were looking for good veins. Um, she found like two and you have to use the ultrasound to get the one and the other one has a lot of scar tissue. So, you know, really like, what do I do? So I feel, the same. I definitely need something. If there was some exercise to give you better veins, I would totally do it. But right now I'm kind of in a rock and a hard place. Um, so he was upset. Why are you getting this removed? And I said, well, I have a clot on that. It was going fibrous. I had the clot in my heart. I've clot my lungs. Um, things aren't really looking great. The portacath itself, the tube was too long going in, messing with the inside of my heart. And I could feel it was like a stabbing thing. I was not feeling good for so long. I just felt like death. I had brought this to my doctor's attention. Again, I brought it to my doctor's attention. Also, the nurse brought it to her attention a couple times. And we said, hey, you know, is there some option? And the nurse suggested a couple times. Um, what about getting a, a port study? And she just kind of poo-pooed it. Rough times at the doctor. Another story. So um, I've been having this problem for a very long time. And so I said, you know, I don't know. Just look at my records. Like that's the best I can tell you is just look at all the stuff. I just had a heart MRI. You can see the echoes. You can see all these things. And he's like, well, you know, sometimes they just want to take it out and they don't know. And people have clots. I've seen it before and blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, check it out. And then my husband was like, you know, she was coughing for like a month, like incessantly. <laughs> I 
kind of annoying, I'm sure. My husband is my advocate. He has my back because especially when I'm in a doctor appointment, everything goes out the window. Like seriously, I don't even recall anything. And luckily my husband was like, you know what? She needs this because, and I explained about the clots in the lungs and how it kind of shut off all this information that I totally, I don't even know why I just spaced out. And the doctor's like, well, usually they don't get it in the lungs. And I said, well, I personally requested to have my arms and legs scanned because it was ridiculous that I had to actually ask for it, but I did um, to rule it out. And we did rule out that it wasn't from the arms or legs. It was from the heart that had spread out. So ultimately the doctor did go through test after test, because believe me, my record is just ridiculous at this point. And he was okay with doing the portacath removal. He did touch it and feel it and, you know, he did mention that it was longer. He didn't say yes or no, but he said, you know, you can usually tell that it's longer, too long, which is pretty obvious, right? So we finally go in and I ask again for the anti-vomit stuff. <laughs> but we go in and um, it's time to get my... Um, Part of Catherine Moon. Okay, so they wheeled me back. The person in the back was starting to talk to me. We we're talking about the area, how I'd moved here. I had a lady come in and she was getting it all set up and she was asking me questions like, How long have you had your port in? And I'm like, I don't know, a couple years. I should pay attention, right? And she's like, Oh, okay, that's going to be pretty deep. And then just we talked, talked. And then he's like, Okay, I'm going to put in the medicine. I'm like, Okay. And then I woke up partially and I could feel someone patting and some movement and pat, pat. And then I was kind of back down and it was like, oh, okay, something's going on. And then I went and I was out again and then I was in the recovery area. <laughs> so um, apparently my, they call your husband or whoever is taking you. And so he was there to meet me and I woke up, I was half and half unawake and not. Um, the nurse let me know that uh, they did have to use the fentanyl and the twilight stuff three times, three freaking times on me. I don't know how long this thing was, should have been like one. And I was like, okay. And my husband and I were talking and they're like, she's gonna have to rest for a little while longer. I was not feeling very good. Um, she gave me a sandwich. Um, I tried to eat it and it was okay, but it was just hard. I just needed more liquids to drink, right? So my husband's like, hey, I'm gonna go get like coffee or something, just you know, go for a walk and I'll be back. And I'm like, cool, like give me time to just recoup because I'm just sleeping. So first I'm like, you know, I better get out of here. Like this is awkward. I don't wanna hold people back and I just wanna go home and get healing, right? So here I am thinking I'm cool and I, I gently get up from the bed and I go to grab my purse so I can call my husband and say, just come back, let's go home. I get up, I grab my purse and I fall right back into the bed, absolutely cold, frozen, dripping, like literally water, almost immediately sweat, cold, crazy sweat and just laying back like, oh, that was not a good idea. <laughs> so I laid there a little while longer like, oh, well, that was shocking. Like literally like that was a weird sensation and what in the world do I do? So the guy looked over and I was like sick, like nauseated, like, oh no. And I was like, I don't feel well, like something's going on. And he yelled, you had some something neuro something reaction. And I was like, you know, just ugh, not good. I almost forgot what happened before I noticed everyone like being desolate. The surgeon had come in and he was checking on me and he said, now mind you, my mind was a major fog, right? He was saying um, something about where did you get this done? And I said, same hospital, different location. And he said, I would have used plastic instead of metal and I don't recall everything that happened. Um, I truly want to get the surgeon's report. They'll give you like a, a whatever reading after the surgery, you know, just basic stuff, but I really wanna know what happened because I was not feeling well. 
Anyhow, he left and then I went through my episode of holy moly, what in the world sick. So after I had laid down again and just tried to get my bearings, I really wanted to go. You just want to go home. You don't want to stay there. You feel awkward. There's people who want to go home. And I know this is weird because it's other people and you need to heal, but it's not a healing environment when you're feeling like, I got to get out of here. <laughs> you know, it's just not. And so um, my husband came back and I'm like, honey, let's just, let's go. I want to go home. And so they called, they brought in a wheelchair for me and um, he gathered up my things and um, they had to help me into the wheelchair. I was so loopy. I was just like, I was sick, sick, sick. Did not have my bearings really, but I needed to get home because it was just super awkward where I was at. Like they're closed and I don't know, just not a great feeling. So um, they wheeled me to the front. He had to go pick up his car from parking and pull up to the thing. So the lady was so sweet, wheeled me out and then I, I needed help walking, kind of, walk me to my car and like he opened it and they were letting me in and I was just kind of falling in <laughs> so I go I fall into the car he, my husband does up my seatbelt and I just lay back like oh you know so as I'm telling this story to my husband I'm like oh I feel so much better in the chest and it's so much clearer I can't believe I feel alive I mean I feel like crap here but oh you know it has a mess <laughs> But it really was a huge difference almost immediately inside, right? So as I'm feeling so good about this and like looking at the future and like telling him all these wonderful things I'm going to be doing, how I'm going to garden the crap out of things and be awesome. Um, I just look at him and I'm like, whoo, 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 grab the vomit back. Luckily, I asked for it again and hurled and hurled and hurled and seriously, why does the non, like the anti blah, 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 why doesn't that vomit stuff work for me? So why doesn't that anti-vomit stuff work for me? I swear, I, I like asked a million times over, glad I got the bag. I am not kidding, like I, what in the world? It was so gross. So all the food that I'd eaten finally after like a day of not eating, um, ended up in the gross bag and luckily the cool thing is that they have a twisty tub so you can like sh shove in the smell <laughs> it's so gross my poor husband driving trying to keep his cool while I'm vomiting in the car shaking feeling absolutely in shock and sick as a dog he is being amazing and kind and calm and talking to me and being just amazingly supportive I am so utterly blessed um, so long story short we get home and I have questions. What happened in the surgery? Why was it extra, extra long? Why did they have to use three times the amount? And why don't I know about everything? I mean, there's always questions. I find that I've only heard about it when I'm actually in the location and someone will say something like, whoa, that was kind of wild or this or that. I wanna know. So I am actually going to try and pursue finding the notes for the surgery because what in the world? like? I don't know. Anyway, I'm not a good drug user. And this is always the example of, I hate drugs. <laughs> I just do not react well. It's so gross. Anyhow, so we get home and my sister had my son. Then she brought him home and I was kind of a mess. And I do not recall most of the rest other than my husband being amazing. And I am truly a blessed, blessed person. And I'm very excited to have the port out and all the benefits of it. I am absolutely sad to not have the port because I truly truly needed it and I agree with the doctor why get a port out when you truly need it I don't know we had to do it because it had to go I don't have a solution it's though, truly a worry and a stress and quite frankly something I just cannot deal with right now I have way too many things that are good and blessings and loving and caring and wonderful things in the world and I am so utterly grateful for the port when it was needed. I did ask them, can you please make sure that if I need another port in the future that I'm still okay here. I can feel a big lump still under there, um, not the port itself. I have just a few more days of healing and I'm going to hug my son like he's never been hugged before. Life is good. I don't know. Um, I'm truly hoping my Pegasus works and I don't have to get phlebotomies again. I'm so utterly scared of that. I can't even tell you, but what can I do? Rock in a hard place. Anyhow, that was my experience and I wish everyone health and happiness, truly, truly, truly health, happiness, 
Enjoy every single simple thing in life and exercise.